Welcome, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to the uh, March 20th Planning, uh, Planning Commission meeting. Uh, the first item will be call to order. Mark Hansen. Here. Leroy Olquist. Here. Brad Seelock. Present. Mike Hines. Here. Rachel Schwenkel. Here. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the uh, approved Planning Commission, or is the consideration of Plat PS 1901 and a S2. Minutes. Minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I apologize. I missed one. Uh, approve the uh, the next item will be approve the Planning Commission minutes of December 19th. I'll so move that. Second. Motions are made and second to approve. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Now we'll do the consideration of Platt PS 1901 and S2 Master Plan MP 1901 by uh, U.S. Home Corporation uh, Leonard to replant to replant and S2 master plan for a parcel of land generally located east and south of Civic Campus at 70, 70, 71 University Avenue to allow for the construction of a 72 unit townhouse development. Uh, I guess it, it's not a, it's not a public hearing, so. Stacy. Hi. So, Vice Chair and uh, the rest of the Planning Commission, as you stated, we have a plat request before us tonight and a master plan request. They're our first of the year, so they're both um, numbered 1901. And the petitioner is U.S. Home Corp. Um, DBA Lennar. So the two requests that we're going to be talking about tonight to um, allow for a 72 unit townhome development just east and south of where we are sitting today are an S2 master plan. Um, the parcels were rezoned from a public zoning to an S2 redevelopment <coughs> district at the May 14th, 2018 city council meeting. Um, the planning commission is required to review and approve um, master plans within an S2 redevelopment district. So because a plan has recently been developed, um, it is before you tonight. And then the second request is to create separate outlots for each of the townhome buildings. Just to go over some history as to um, where, we're at, where we have been and where we're at now, um, over the past two years, the city's HRA staff and city staff have been meeting with um, developers and builders related to the development around the Civic Campus. Um, Pulte Homes, as you know, um, was approved to build a 26-unit um, uh, patio home development on the land um, just south here between the existing single-family homes and the new Lock Parkway. And then in the summer of 2018, the council and the HRA held a work session to review proposals for a townhome development between the parkway and the pond. Lennar was then selected to be the developer on that portion. Um, the HRA did approve a redevelopment contract with Lennar at their December 6th, um, 2018 meeting. And as, the result, as a result, we have um, the request before you tonight. So a little bit about the project, you'll see the site plan um, on the right hand side of your screen. The boundary is um, surrounded in the dashed uh, yellow line. Um, it will allow for the construction of 16 townhome buildings for a total of 72 individual units. Each building will have four or five units and then each unit will have two garage stalls and two surface parking stalls. Additional parking is also provided throughout the development for visitors. Um, the southern portion will have two access points on Two Lock Parkway, and then the north portion of the development will have one access on Lock Parkway and one on 71st Avenue to the north. Um, the internal streets will be privately owned and maintained by a homeowner situation, uh, association as well landscaping, um, internal sidewalks, and snow removal. The remainder of the trail that you see on the site plan around the pond will also be part of this construction project. 
The petitioner is proposing two different type, uh, types of townhomes. Um, the first one is called the Carriage Urban Row, and it will be two and a half stories and mainly situated along the parkway. There'll be 36 individual units of this style and they'll range in size from 1,600 to 1,900 square feet. Um, up to three bedrooms and two and a half bathrooms. And they're anticipated to sell for 275,000 to 300,000. And you'll see on the rendering of the, of the uh, carriage urban row on the top of your screen. And then um, Scott Hickok, Paul Bolin and I did have a chance to go take a look at a project that the petitioner is developing in Brooklyn Park. And so photos of that project are on the bottom portion of the screen. Very nice development, I would suggest going to take a peek if you have a chance because it's on the parade. Um, the next style of townhome is the Colonial Patriot. Um, this is a two-story um, townhome and it will be mainly situated along the pond. Again, 36 individual units that will range in size from 1,700 to 1,800 square feet, um, up to three bedrooms and three baths. And again, anticipated price range 285,000 to 315. Same situation here, a rendering of the project um, is on the top of your screen and then um, the petitioner has a project in Maple Grove um, that we were able to take a look at and photos of that project are on the bottom. Um, it is anticipated that they will start construction on the southern portion of the project in late spring to early summer of this year. And then the second phase that's um, along 71st Avenue is planned for 2020 construction season. So as most of you know, um, when we do an S2 master plan, um, it does require that the site plan become the master plan for the site. So anytime the master plan is changed substantially, it then needs to come back to the planning commission and city council for approval. And in S2 zoning, um, I would say compares mostly to a PUD development um, that other communities have, where it allows flexibility when designing a project. Um, it allows the city to look at the site plan and determine if the proposed project meets the goals of the comprehensive plan. Um, this proposed project is very similar to Christensen Crossing. Um, and uh, their townhome development and does meet the intent of what the city was hoping to see with this last phase of the development around the Civic Campus. Um, a little bit of information on the preliminary plat. Um, like I stated earlier, there's gonna be a creation of 22 new outlots. 16 of those will be for the townhome buildings and then outlots A and T are gonna be for the private roads within the development. Outlots D, K, and O are for the trail connections and green space, and I've highlighted those on your screen in green. And then outlot P, which is that large area in blue, is being replatted to um, redescribe the boundary of the pond that exists, the trail, and then the green will have green area along the west side of the development, all to be owned by the city. So that blue area will be owned um, by the city. I did mention in your packet some information about the wetland that um, is on this site. There, we did discover that there's about a half an acre wetland um, that has always existed here, even you know when Columbia Arena was here. Um, it is regulated by the Wetland Conservation Act, and we have received a permit. Um, actually, the Watershed District received the permit because they're a local government unit for this project to fill the wetland, and then credits were purchased um, to allow us to fill it. And what that means is then um, a new wetland, excuse me, a new wetland is then co constructed somewhere else. So when you purchase credits, um, you know, all those credits go together from other municipalities and then a new wetland is created somewhere else within the state. Um, the Army Corps of Engineers also needs to issue us a permit and they will review the project now that we have a site plan and we expect that to happen um, 
soon. There also was a small amount of contamination in the wetland that's being handled through Braun Intertect and um, it is at a level that's lower than current standards. Um, Braun has been working with us with the whole redevelopment of this site so they're very knowledgeable in, in what's happening out there and we have heard from the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency that they don't expect any restrictions on the development. Um, it is a slab um, development and all that they'll need to do, the petitioner will need to do is notify the new homeowners. And Lennar is aware of this and from what I understand their environmental people are aligned and um, understand that they'll need to mitigate the contamination at the time of construction. Um, what all of that means as far as how they're going to mitigate it, we don't know yet, um, but it is something that we're working on. And if you need it in, or want additional information, John Lenander, our assistant city engineer, is the one that's been handling all of this stuff. Um, and he would be a good resource for you. And I can put him in contact with you if you have additional questions. But I just wanted to provide that information because I, I wasn't sure if we ever talked about it before. So mm. it's all being taken care of. So, staff does recommend approval of the master plan amendment and the preliminary plat as they meet the goals highlighted in the comp plan and they meet the goals and objectives that the city and the HRA have set for development on this site. Staff recommends that if the master plan is approved, the following stipulations be attached. Number one, the project shall be developed in accordance with the site plan exhibit submitted for townhomes at Lock Park, page one of one by Carlson McCain and dated by staff as 3-12-19. The petitioner shall enter into a development agreement with the city prior to final plat approval. Number three, the petitioner shall meet all requirements set forth by the building code, fire code, the city's planning department, city's engineering department, the Rice Creek Watershed, the existing comprehensive stormwater management plan for the Civic Campus Project, and the city on completion of the Corps of Engineers wetland permit. Staff recommends that if the plat is approved, the following stipulation be attached. The petitioner shall pay a park dedication fee of $1,500 for each individual townhome lot created as a result of this plat. So there's 72 lots, so that would be $108,000. That concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have, and the petitioner is also here for questions. Anyone on the commission have questions? Yeah, I had a question. <clears throat> now, um, you said there was a development like this in uh, Brooklyn Park. Right. Is that right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what kind of uh, the buyers there, what were their makeup? I mean, was it like, uh, was it families or? Um, just, you know, like married people without kids or or seniors or what 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 exactly who actually is occupying these kind of buildings? Yeah, I think it's a good mix, um, but the petitioner would be able to answer that question because I'm sure he has all the demographics on who's living in in their units out in Brooklyn Park. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good evening, evening members Thank of the you. Planning Commission. Uh, my name is Josh excuse, Metzer. Excuse me. Yes. Uh, we'll get... We'll finish with Stacy, and then I'll, okay. you can then you can uh, sure. call you up. I did have another question. Sure. On the remediation part, yep. um, is it? Do you know if it's going to include um, removing soils? And likely, yes. Okay. So the intent is to take all contaminated soils out yep. and replace it with clean soils. Then, Correct. Okay. Yep. I wondered if there was a plan for the. Uh, the park dedication fee, because that is sizable, and we certainly lost a number of soccer fields. Yeah, um, you know, Mike could probably answer that question. We, as a planning department, collect the park dedication fee when we have developments, and then, from what I understand, then it is turned over to the parks um, board, and they can determine how they're going to use the money. So... Not sure if there's been a plan developed no, there, yet. There's been no plan development yet. You know, we haven't. Uh, we have some things in the works, and you know, mm -hmm. building a lot of new buildings, uh, new um, uh, the new uh, shelter. Shelter. And, that's what I'm looking sure. for at Springbrook and stuff that is um, taking a lot of money. But uh, mm -hmm. there's things in the works, but no 
real plan for yet for that money. Yep. Any other question? <coughs> I did have one. I did have one. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Um, the trail yeah. that we talked about mm -hmm. is that's going to be owned by the city. Yes. And are we putting that in, or is that going to be part of the construction? Um, Lennar is going to be putting in the portion that is um, on their side of the development. Okay. Um, but the city is going to be actively involved because we need to make some connections to right. to make sure it goes all the way to 71st. So okay. and then around the pond, but it's going to be a great walking loop for so residents. When we come to snow blowing it, are we going to you know we're going to do part and they're going to do part or how is that going to work? The city will maintain the the part that is around the pond. Okay. Um, any internal sidewalks, I'm assuming that the Petitioners Homeowners Association will take care of. And then sidewalks, it's usually 50-50. Sometimes the city does it, sometimes um, the neighboring property owners Well, I'm do just it. worried about the trail, because <clears throat> once we get going around the trail and it goes all the way around, yep. people are going to, I'm, I'm hoping that it's going to get a lot of use and people will be walking out there. So I just want to make sure we know who's supposed to take care of what. Oh yeah, we're we're going to be doing that. Stacy, yep. is that part of the Race Creek Regional Trail, or does that become part of it? Um, is that... the trail around the pond. Yes, is just going to be our own um, separate city More trail. Like a trail pond. connection. Yeah, okay. but it will so connect existing... to multiple trails throughout the community. Yeah, the, the existing alignment that used to go past Columbia Arena didn't really change. That trail actually that goes through Lock Park did get moved to the south um, side of Lock Park Parkway. So okay. it's right along the side of the, okay. uh, and that's part of the regional trail system that right. then goes across University okay. Avenue. Okay. So two separate things. Yep. And then just one other clarifying question. I know that we're looking at uh, redoing pedestrian access and, and certain bus stops and things like that along University, including right outside of this development so is there has there been some sort of communication or understanding made as far as uh, this development occurring here and it it sounds like they want to encourage people to use public transit mm -hmm. and that bus stop could use some help. right right well i think that uh that is one of the main reasons we're having these corridor meetings right with mindot and the met, um, metro, metro Transit about um, access to their different bus stops and um, their actual facilities along University Avenue. But um, so there should be good things coming out of those meetings. Um, and they are certainly are aware that we're working on this. They are aware. So, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any, any other questions? Okay. Petitioner, <laughs> it's your turn. Uh, state your name and, and yeah. Good evening, uh, Josh Metzer with Lennar, uh, out of the Plymouth office. Um, thank you for uh, having us here tonight, uh, Stacy. Thank you for the thorough report and presentation. Um, she pretty much covered uh, any talking points that I did have um, uh, to answer the question on uh, demographics uh, at the Brooklyn Park uh, community. It's uh, it's a mix. It's uh, some young families, young professionals, uh, also some uh, retirees, uh, empty nesters on the younger side, because uh, there are a number of stairs in these yeah. units. Um, but uh, it's been a good mix. Um, both the two communities that uh, Stacy and other staff members did visit, um, are the, the Brooklyn Park and Maple Grove, have, uh, were about 50% uh, sold already and they've both been open um, just over a year, I believe. Um, so they're doing well. Um, we're very excited. Um, very excited to be a part of this uh, redevelopment project here in Fridley. Um, everyone's very much looking forward to it, and we know it's going to be a, a great project. Well, I, I guess I'm trying to, I'm curious because because uh, I'm a senior, and, um, and I'm looking to be an empty nester one of these days. And um, I'm kind of curious as to um, uh, townhomes to me are, a, you know, a viable place to move down to. But having stairs that go up like doesn't isn't very appealing to me. So I, 
is is the trend to have try to get as many townhomes crushed together here and get as maximize your space by having two levels or yeah i mean that was our vision for it and we understand that was the city's vision for this piece of the redevelopment of course the patio homes or villa homes across the street that Pulte developed complement that as as more mm -hmm. of a single level living um so our our town homes the uh, colonial patriot that were mentioned um they're two level so there's one level right. one, one stairs and then the uh is there carriage. not that much demand for a single level these days or what uh, there is sure um, mm -hmm. we're developing those elsewhere um, mm -hmm. but but this project the vision for this project um, for us was was townhomes here do you find that the single level is more in the uh, senior development areas uh, as opposed to one like this it depends on the community um, it depends on school districts um, we, we've seen both um, some of our what we call villas um, can it function as more you know, targeted towards uh, retiree, empty nester, yeah. where their uh, HOA fully maintained, uh, maintain yards, maintain exteriors. Same product can also be uh, non-HOA um, for all variety of, of demographics. Um, so that it's, it's a versatile product. Okay. Uh, have you uh, seen the stipulations? And yes. Are you in agreement with them? Uh, yep. Okay. I guess I have a question for Stacy then. I, uh, is our master plan, does that address different demographics like that, like trying to address keeping people in Fridley who've lived here for years and years and, you know, want to downsize and maybe have a townhome that's on one level and stuff like that? Is there a certain number of uh, percentage of uh, housing that the master plan has in there for that? or? Um. Good question. So throughout our comp planning process over the last 10, 15 years, we've heard from people, we want one level mm -hmm. patio homes. So we have 26 of them we got yeah. just south of us here. And yeah. um, they, I would say maybe there's like six left. That's good. It's been going pretty well. It's been moving very fast. Mm -hmm. The vision for this next phase of this development mm -hmm. was more multifamily than mm -hmm. single family. Um, but that doesn't mean that there still is an interest in doing a patio home, patio home type development somewhere else within the city. I mean, we still have some other locations that we're, you know, looking at and that old getting inquiries Girl Scout on. Camp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure that's a viable option, <laughs> actually. Okay. Really? Um, oh, okay. Um, but, there's you know, two blocks there's from where I live watch right now. Meeting. Watch the last meeting. <laughs> Had a there's on there's it. definitely demand for it. I mean, we're seeing it with yeah. the, how quickly the, the patio homes are being filled. Yeah. Um, but this next phase between us and yeah. them was um, sought by council and the HRA as a townhome development. Okay. So. Any other questions, from the developer? Oh, thank thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, any discussion, any further discussion? If not, we could have a, uh, a motion. I think we have to have two, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, two uh, motions, uh, one for uh, uh, the Platt PS 1901. I'll make a motion that we approve PS 19-01. Second. second. Motion's been made and second. Although, is there any discussion on the motion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, this goes to council on the 8th of April. Mm -hmm. Did we have to vote on two things or one? Uh, the master plan, too. Yes, please. The next, next item would be the uh, site plan, S2 master plan, M MP 1901. Is there a motion to accept that? I'll move. Second. Motion's been made and second to... Uh, with the uh, stipulations. It had stipulations. Oh, with with so. stipulations. Both, by, by the way, that's both of them. Um, is there... Uh, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. This also goes before the council on the 8th of April. And uh, that's it. We've approved. It. Now it's up to the council. Yeah. 
Thank you. Thank you. you know, it's nice to see the new development coming to Fridley. I think mm -hmm. there is a lot of a lot of need for it, and certainly mm -hmm. it's economically mm -hmm. so yeah. good for us. This is good. Good. The next item is to uh, accept the minutes of other commissions. Uh, what we're going to do on this one is change the policy a little bit. We'll uh, have one motion to accept all nine. Uh, however, I'll read uh, each one first, and then, then we can make the motion. So the first one is December, the December 3rd, 2018 Park and Rec Commission. The next one is January 7th, 2019 Park and Rec Commission. Third is the December 11th, 2018 Environmental Quality and Energy Commission. Fourth is January 8th, 2019 Environmental Quality and Energy Commission. Fifth is December 6th, 2018 Housing and Redevelopment Authority Commission. Uh, sixth is the January 3rd, 2019 Housing and Redevelopment Authority Commission. Seventh is the Feb February 13, 2019 Housing and Redevelopment Authority Commission. Eighth is the February 12, 2019 Environmental Quality and Energy Commission. And the ninth and last is February 4, 2019 Park and Rec Commission. I'll so move that. Second. Motion has been made and second to accept all nine of the minutes. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Other business? I just have a couple updates. For you, we haven't had a meeting since December, so um, on that meeting's agenda was the development um, at the old City Hall campus. So that was approved by the council. You probably have since heard that, but um, things are moving along quickly there. Um, the frontage road was actually shut down um, this week. Yes, I did. So, uh, so far so good. We haven't gotten anybody complaining about it or anything. So, um, so we expect to see demo of the city hall and construction of the new senior building soon, this, this spring, summer. Um, and then I just wanted to remind everybody that we have our third workshop on our corridor study of six, uh, Highway 65 and University Avenue tomorrow night from 6 to 8 p.m. here in this room. And then our April meeting is canceled. So that's all I have. Okay. Anybody else have anything? Man, look at that sky. Mm. <laughs> okay. We're going to see that in the old building. No, that's right. <laughs> well, I have a motion to adjourn. I'll move. Oh, you want to do it? Go Let's ahead. do it. Motion, motion to adjourn. I'll second it then. Motion has been made and second to adjourn. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. We are adjourned. Well, uh, thank you for the.